best that I can with the best that I have. That particular pivot, I discovered that I had to be creative. And really just evaluate, you know, who you are. Real people and real stories of courage. Hello and welcome to another episode of Pivotal Moments with Lolita. I am excited about yet another amazing guest that I have on the show today for our conversation. I have Marion Harper with me today, and I actually came across Marion through social media, so those connections can be beneficial. And I tell you, I just really fell in love with just her business and her ethics and her professionalism. So I'm super excited to have her on the show today and talk about what she's doing and how she's pivoted. So without any further delay, let me introduce Marion, the owner of Aware of My Value, which I'm going to have her tell you about what's what's that all about. So welcome, Marion. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. <laughs> um, so um, I'm Marion Harper, um, the owner of Aware of My Value, where we really like to encourage women to chase their dreams and to achieve their goals and to more importantly, remind them that they are important, that what you want and need matter, that you are somebody. Wow. And, and I absolutely love that. And, you know, just even looking over your bio and just the different things that you went through to just kind of get to this point. Um, I, I'm all over that. You know, that's exactly what my natural me woman is all about. So let's get into our conversation. Um <clears throat> So as I said, you know, we're here talking about pivotal moments, and I know you probably, like everyone else, had to try to figure out, okay, which pivotal moment do I talk about? Because life is full of pivoting. So which moment did you decide to talk about today? Um, So I decided to talk about, I guess, back in uh, 2017, I really was unhappy with where my life was and where it was going. I was a stay-at-home mom and I have three kids. And, you know, in the beginning, I've been working since I was in high school. So it was like, I want to work. I want to work. I met my husband while while I was in the military. And then I got out and then I was working also. And then I had kids and then it was kind of like, okay, well, I need to stay home with them because in order to work, I have to pay for daycare and, you know, it was just a whole nother story. But um, with him being in the military, it's sometimes like a waiting game, like, okay, well, you're up for orders in two years. So it's like, okay, so I'll put my life on hold for these two years before I can actually do something that I want to do. So actually I was in the process of um, making sure that everybody was okay making sure that, you know, my husband's career was good, making sure that the kids were good and making sure, you know, that everything was taken care of. And it kind of came from childhood. I was the oldest child and I was used to taking care of everybody. I was used to doing everything for everybody. So it was like, you know, it transferred over into my marriage to where I'm doing the same thing for everyone else. And I put myself on the back burner. So I would say, that, you know, I was very unhappy. I was unfulfilled. And it was a point where I was like, I'm going back to work. (laughs) So that that really was my pivot. And I remember I put in an application every day for a year. Every day, because I was like, I'm going back to work. And I think my pivot was um, actually deciding to do something for me to do what I wanted to do, realizing that I was, I was somebody and that this is my life right now. And I need to, you know, live it. And I need to do the things that, that I need to do for myself that I had, you know, goals and ambitions and things like that to do before I actually um, became a stay at home mom. Wow. First of all, I'm so happy that you're sharing what you're sharing, because this is so common for women. Um, the women I've had on this show, women that I talk to, friends, workshops that I conduct, like this is just such a common denominator that as women, we get so caught up in just being everything for everyone else and we lose ourselves and we lose that yes. identity. And that can yes. be hard to be stuck in that place. 
So mm-hmm. I love that you're sharing, you know, you went through that, but you were able to do something about it um, and make that pivot. And, and what I also mm-hmm. appreciate, which I think is um, really excellent for, for really anyone is you talked about putting in an application every day for a year. And every I day. love that because, you know, sometimes <laughs> when we're, maybe we're looking for a new job or we're looking to reach a goal or whatever it is, you know, we kind of think, okay, we want instant gratification, right? Well, I put in, you know, an application or I did it for a couple of weeks or I worked on this for, you know, a month and nothing happened. What, what do I do now? But I love that right. you have to be determined. And sometimes that's a long-term process. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. So when we talk about pivoting, um, and we talk about the you know the pivot the pivotal moment um, is that thing that really causes that shift and that pivot right and what we found is that when you think about an actual pivot um, that's usually that center theme that that the turn um, goes around so when it comes to our life and pivoting there's usually that thing that's unchangeable that everything else must shift around that. And a lot of times we don't really discover that until we've kind of made the pivot. And then we recognize this is what's important to me. This is what's unchangeable. This is what I'll make all my shifts around that. So for you, what did you discover was that unchangeable, important thing that everything else must shift around? Um, I think that that thing was me. It was myself. And it was because I for so long, never put myself before anybody. Like I'm that kind of person that will work my fingers to the bone to make sure everybody else is okay, except for myself. And so that, that thing was, was me, my dreams and, you know, my goals and the things that I wanted to do, everything else had to work around what I wanted to do because I worked around what everybody else wanted to do for so long. Um, so that meant when I finally did get my job, I, I actually, my dream job was to work for the government because I was in the military. I wanted to continue, you know, my service. And I actually got that job after applying for a year. And I actually got that job. And um, so everything had to adjust. Everything else had to adjust. My kids, I had to wake them up early to drop them off somewhere so that, you know, they can get to school while I'm at work. And um, sometimes my husband had to, you know, help out and pick up the kids or, um also like my my daughter she had to get up on her own my oldest she had to get up on her own she's in middle school and some you know every everything had to adjust around what I wanted to do at that point because it was more so about me fulfilling the dreams that that I had you know so um yeah it was my goals my hopes my dreams it was it was my turn it was my turn so everything had to work around that and I wasn't taking no for an answer (laughs) I love it. I love it. And you really, you really answered my next question too about adjustments. <laughs> and I love that because, you know, adjusting um, can be slightly different than a pivot. You know, pivots are, are somewhat more favorable because they really are centered around something, like I said, that's important to us. Adjustments, when we adapt to things or when other people have to adapt to things that are important to us, that can be really uncomfortable. Um, so I love that you shared that, you know, th- those adjustments, I'm sure were not easy. And for everybody in your family to get on board, you know, <laughs> that was not an easy adjustment, but mm-hmm. you did it. And, and I can tell that this was something that has definitely left you feeling more fulfilled. It did. It did. And honestly, um, <laughs> it's kind of crazy because I did have another adjustment in all of that. So, um, in working for the government, it w- it became it became hard on my family, on my kids, I would say. And so I feel like I had to make another adjustment because I ended up quitting my dream job. I ended up quitting. Um, so while I was working, it seemed like my kids just went haywire. So my son, one day he cut all his hair off with us uh, with some scissors. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> just all over his head. And at one point he was, he wasn't doing so good in school. So um, he had gotten in trouble for a grade that he got and he ran away from the house at night. It was about nine o'clock at night. He ran away from the house to the school to go find his teacher to have her vouch for him 
And I couldn't find, I had to call the police. I had the firemen out there looking for him. It was so hard on me at that point. My, my oldest, she was failing, failing in school. And then my youngest, who was five at the time or four at the time, she started wetting herself again. And I felt bad as a mother that my kids are going through all of this and here I am, <laughs> you know, doing all this stuff that, you know, it's all about me. It's all about me. And my kids were suffering at the hand of that. So the adjustment that I made, and it, and it was adjustment because my kids are my top, my top priority. And I had to quit the job to make sure that I was here for them because I was a stay at home mom for about 10 years with them. And, and that's part of the reason why I became fed up with being home in the first place. I was home for so long, but my kids are my goal. <laughs> and so if they're not okay, I'm not okay. So taking care of them was also taking care of me. And so what I had to do was stay home with them and everything went back to normal. Everything got better after I stayed home. But this time I decided that I wasn't gonna just be home. I went back to school and graduated. I started my business, aware of my value. And I started to do the things that I wanted to do. We started to travel more. I started to actually live. It wasn't about, um, wasn't about just having the job. It was about actually enjoying what I'm doing. Because even when I was working for the government, I just, I found out that it was fun to say I work for the government. <laughs> But it wasn't yeah. that fun working for the government. <laughs> so I, so the adjustment that I had to make was to actually be home again, to be a stay-at-home mom, which was something that I really didn't want to do. But in that, I made the, I made the pivot <laughs> to, to actually continue to work on me, to continue to do um, the things that I wanted to do to achieve my goals and um, my dreams. So it worked out wow and i mean what you have said and shared is just so important because it really shows that when you are able to identify what's important to you even when mm -hmm. you have to make these adjustments you can still stay true to that because like you said you know you had to come back home which and it seemed like that was just not in line with with your goals initially but you mm -hmm. recognize, okay, I can still put me first and make sure I'm okay while making this adjustment. I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to start my business. I'm going to travel. I'm going to still fill that, that void for me Absolutely. in this adjustment. That is golden. That mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. wow. Yep. It's not the end. It wasn't the end. It was just where I was. And this, this is life, you know, things happen things change and you just have to adjust. You have to adjust. Wow. Mm -hmm. I love that. Ah. Would, you, would you figure out how to make that a hashtag? This is not the end. This is just where I am. <laughs> That'd be a yes. long hashtag though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work it out. <laughs> yes. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes. Welcome to the yes. end of our conversation. As people know, I always have my guests just leave that that um, inspirational or quote or motivation or whatever it is that you want to leave directly with the viewers, uh, what would you like to say to them? Um, well, I, I have like a favorite song um, by one of my favorite, favorite artists, India Irie, and um, it's called I Choose. And that song helped me through um, the, those times that I was going through. And it's, I choose basically says that it's, it's your life is up to you. It's up to you. You choose whether, you know, you're going to be happy or whether you're going to be sad or you choose whether, you know, you're going to do this or do, you know, do that. It's your choice. The, your life is your choice. So I remember it was one time where my, um, where I wanted to blame my husband for something and it wasn't my husband's fault. It was my fault. You know, I could have said, you know, no, or I could have said yes, but it was my, it was my choice to actually do the thing or whatever it was, but it was, it was my choice 
to do that. So I wanted to, you know, encourage people to choose to choose what they want to do. Like it's not your life is not up to someone else and it's not up to to anything. It's up to you. So you get to decide whether you're going to be and what you're going to be. You get to choose that. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I noticed you didn't plug your your uh, business. <laughs> Where can we find oh. you? <laughs> You so, have amazing um, products, amazing. I'm telling y'all, I, I, I will be getting even more soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I'm the owner of Where of My Value, of course. And what we do um, is we sell products. We have products that um, encourage. We have products that empower and that motivate. There's nothing um, in our store that will turn you off, you know, everything is to encourage you, empower you to be better, to be stronger, to be um, who it is that you are. I actually have a notebook or two behind me. This one um, is be your own kind of beautiful. And it's a notebook. And also this one, um, be still and know that I am God. Um, I have a a lot of other notebooks um, in my on my website and the website is www.awareofmyvalue.com. And you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at aware of my value. Those are, the name is the same on both platforms. But yeah, we like to encourage women. All of our products are encouraging and motivating um, to help you through those pivots and to help you through those adjustments um, to encourage you through those as well. So look us up. Good stuff. Good stuff. I have definitely um, utilized your customizing services. So that's been awesome. And I mean, just the notebooks and journals and things are just so dope and so amazing. So I will be back (laughs) and very (laughs) nice. And she's very professional. So yes, 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 yes. I'm Mm -hmm. super excited. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and we're, we're a baby company still. So we're still in our growth stages. And right now we mostly have uh, notebooks and I have a planner that will be coming out uh, next week. And um, mm-hmm. also we'll have other things coming like uh, t-shirts and sweatshirts and candles. Even I have a, a motivational candle line that's going to be coming out as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so check us out and um, sign up for our uh, list, our email list. So you can be notified when um, those things come about. There you go. Awesome. Well, Marion, thank you so much for joining the conversation today. I love what you have shared. I love um, your voice in this discussion. And um, I'm aware of your value. And I'm so glad that you were able to become aware of your value and be able to use that, that talent and your gifts to help other women become aware of theirs. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. You're welcome. And ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of Pivotal Moments with Lolita. Thank you so much for always tuning in and your support. And we'll see you next time on Pivotal Moments with Lolita.